In my last video, I built this four to one Unin in an attempt to make a more budget friendly version of the Challenger antenna. For more about that antenna, you can see my previous videos. In this video, I'm going to basically finish this project off. First, I'm going to have to put this on in, in some kind of enclosure. And then I will uh, cut wires for the radiating element and the counterpoise. And then finally, I'll tune it. And hopefully, I'll be able to make some contacts if everything's working well. So as far as an enclosure goes, um, I'm fortunate that I have a 3D printer. And so that's probably the easiest thing for me to do. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer um, or have a friend or access to one at a local library, um, you can basically mount this on anything, uh, any kind of project box. Um, I've seen some people make um, wire winders with, with toroids mounted on them uh, out of like cutting boards. Um, you can get creative, but uh, I figure since I have a 3D printer, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And I could design my own model, but that's uh, a little bit time consuming and I'm not the best at 3D modeling software. So I'm going to go ahead and just look online for some freely available designs and uh, print those out. And I'll be back here in a minute. So I was able to find a couple really good models online and uh, this one I thought was really kind of neat. It's actually a it's shaped like a frog and this is from a uh, KR1 BBT. Uh, I'll link this down in the description, but um, it's actually built uh, very well. It's a, it's a really neat model. Um, of course, it's a wire winder and it's got a place for the coax connection here. Um, this is going to be uh, the antenna and this is going to be the counterpoise. So what I need to do is um, basically wire up the coax connection um, and then connect the ground to the counterpoise and then connect uh, this to the um, antenna element. And so I'm going to go ahead and build that out and I might go ahead and mount my second one in this, uh, on this wire winder. This is from uh, the ham radio dude. So thank you, dude. Um, he has this on, uh, I think it's printables or Thingiverse. I'll um, link that in the description as well. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these things put together. And then I'll be back with you once I have all the connections made and show you how I did that. Okay, so I got both unins um, in enclosures uh, or mounted to a winder. So this one here uh, was far more difficult just because there's not a whole lot of space in here. But... Um, if you can see the center, um, this connection right here is going to the center of the coax. And then the ground is going to the not only the ground of the connection, but also the counterpoise. And then right here is our antenna connection. Um, this one was far easier to build just because there's much more space. So I've got the center connector and the ground. Um, I just noticed I didn't put any solder right there, so I'm going to put a dab of solder. Um, I actually ran this through the ground connection and then to the counterpoise, so that made it easy. And then this goes to the antenna. So now that we've got them put together, I'm going to go ahead and head out to the park and see if we can't get these tuned. I'm out here at my local park, and I've got the uh, budget Challenger build here. I cut uh, the radiating element a little bit longer than 25 feet. And whenever you're tuning antennas, uh, I find it best just to cut them a little longer than you expect, and then you can slowly trim to get where you want to get. Um, the counterpoise is about five foot ten inches. Um, I think Greg's document says five foot nine inch or something like that, but I, I cut it just slightly longer since I usually work a little bit lower in the bands than he does. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this up on my telescoping mast. And I've got that just in a drive-on mast holder. Now, this isn't the most ideal since it's gonna be so close to my truck, but it's just very easy for me to put up an antenna using that method. You could easily throw this up in a tree and that would work just as well. Um, I've got my computer with Nano VNA Saver hooked up and uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, up in the air.
So I've got the antenna up. I've got the counterpoise laid on the ground. Um, one thing to note is always, uh, always use a choke with this antenna. If you don't have a choke, uh, you can just get an FT240-43 and wrap some coax about, I think the recommendation is 12 turns. A lot of times they'll do six turns one way, go um, through it, and then do six turns the other way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep here. As you can see from the first SWR sweep, the lowest SWR of 1.7 to 1 was at 13 megahertz. So I decided to trim the radiating element to shift the dip to the right. After making a few cuts, now the lowest SWR was 2 to 1 at 14.1 MHz. I wanted a better SWR, so I decided to add a little bit of link to the counterpoise. After adding about a foot to the counterpoise, I had a 1.1 to 1 SWR at 12.8 MHz. So I decided to trim the radiating element till I got to 1.1 to 1 in the CW portion of the band. Okay, so after playing around with this for, for a little bit, um, I think I finally got a decent, uh, a decent SWR reading. Um, it's reading uh, 1.1 at, let's see here, actually 1 point, yeah, 1.1 at 14.04. So that's gonna be perfect. Um, I had to kind of fiddle around with both the counterpoise and the radiating element to get a decent reading. You know, and I don't, I don't know exactly why that would be uh, different on this version of the antenna than using a whip, but uh, it looks like I've got a really good reading now and uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get on the air. So what I'm going to do is um, I think I'm going to send out some RBN tests just uh, using 5 watts and uh, I'll probably make some contacts QRP. And then what I'll do is I'll probably turn the power up quite a bit um, and see how hot the unin gets. So what I wanna do is now I wanna send out a RBN test. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my power down to five watts because I, I feel like that's just a really good test of an antenna to see if it's working uh, QRP. Uh, if you hit some reverse beacons QRP, then the antenna is working pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and find an open frequency. And I don't hear anything, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to pull up the reverse beacon on here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and send test and my call sign. And hopefully some reverse beacons will, will pick me up. And again, I'm at five watts right now. I hit 15 RBN skimmers on five watts with the budget Challenger. I was strongest in Omaha, Nebraska at 27 dB, but the average was 15.8 dB I was fairly strong to the west of me, both in Arizona, Southern Utah, and even Southern California. All right, so I just finished up my activation here with the uh, budget Challenger build, and uh, it, it worked really well. Um, I don't know if I got great footage of me um, tuning the antenna, and I apologize for that. Uh, I kind of get in the zone, and I kind of went back and forth a bunch of times. Um, and I, I didn't really give a whole lot of commentary with that. So um, just to recap how that worked out, um, I had to adjust uh, both the radiating element and the counterpoise a little bit. And I finally got a, a, a perfect SWR through the entire uh, 20 meter band. And it just takes a little trial and error. Um, obviously with a whip, it's a lot easier because you can just you know, it's infinitely adjustable, as Greg says. You know, you can, you can uh, make it a little bit longer and shorter. Um, with a wire, it's a little bit more challenging. However, now that you have, I have the wire cut and the, the counterpoise cut and it's a perfect SWR, um, I can leave them there and it'll be fine on 20 meters. I left these wires bare for, for tuning, obviously. Um, when I get home, I'll put some spade connectors on that should make it a lot more durable. 
Um, as far as the activation went, it went really well. I sent out a, a couple RBN spots initially and uh, I'll put up the map and go over that. But uh, I hit quite a few spots uh, on the reverse beacon network with five watts. And then I started my activation and I probably wasn't very patient. I called CQ a couple times, but I only had about 30 minutes to activate. So I ended up turning my power up, which I wanted to test this unin for, um, you know, see how much power it could handle anyway. So I ended up operating a little bit 20 watts, then I went up to 50 watts for a little bit. And then the last 20 minutes or so, I was running a full 100 watts. Now, when I went up to 20 watts, I ended up with quite a pile up, and then uh, it, it pretty much lasted the whole time. Uh, I didn't really have to call CQ very much during the activation, I think one time maybe. I got 41 contacts in 37 minutes. I'm pretty happy with this antenna and uh, I didn't calculate exactly how much it cost because I had some of the parts already. I already had some of the SO239 uh, connections. I already had the magnet wire. Um, you know, obviously I had wire to use. So the, the un in itself probably only cost me about $5 to build. And then, you know, it really didn't take much time. So I would really recommend uh, building this antenna. Now, if you don't want to use a Challenger, you could still use the same exact Unin for something uh, like the Rybakov is a very popular multi-band antenna. And it's basically just a 25 foot wire and it's a non-resonant wire. So a four to one Unin, a 25 foot wire. Now I would add uh, probably at least four 17 foot counterpoise wires if I was going to use that. But if you have a tuner, you can tune that antenna on 40 meters through 10 meters. And I've used that antenna quite a bit with some, uh, quite a bit of success, especially when conditions are good. It's not the most efficient antenna, but uh, it's really good for band hopping. So I might, uh, I might try that out here pretty soon and, and, and share the results with you. Um, but anyway, um, that's, that's it for this, uh, this build. Um, I've got a few other antenna projects coming up and uh, I'll share those with you as well. Uh, 73 and hope to see you on the air.